Hi, I'm Peter Klatsky from Spring Fertility, and we're talking about IVF and whether or not to pursue pre-implantation genetic screening, also, also known as pre-implantation genetic testing. At Spring Fertility, currently over 80% of the patients going through IVF choose to perform testing on their embryos before transferring them. This testing is designed to see if the embryo is healthy. In other words, if it has 23 pair of chromosomes. Historically, in the United States, most patients did not have a pregnancy when they had an embryo transfer, and therefore we would transfer more than one embryo. Sometimes we would transfer two, three, even five embryos at a time. And unfortunately, oftentimes when we did succeed, we'd see patients with twins and triplets, and these are considered a complication because they're higher risk pregnancies. In 2010 to 2013, new technologies were developed that allowed us to test an embryo before transferring it. That testing is referred to as pre-implantation genetic screening. So how does it work? With pre-implantation genetic testing or screening, we're taking a few cells, about three to five cells from the part of the embryo that will become the placenta. We can do this without damaging the embryo. Those cells are then sent for analysis. How they do that, they amplify the DNA, and then they try to identify how many chromosomes are in that embryo. A healthy embryo should have 23 pair of chromosomes. Once we do this testing, the age of the woman who produced the eggs is no longer a factor because any euploid embryo, regardless of the age of the intended mother, should have about a 70% implantation rate and close to a 60 to 70% live birth rate. This is an incredibly powerful tool, but not necessary for everyone. So why wouldn't you do pre-implantation genetic testing? The truth is with pre-implantation genetic testing, there's some limitations. The test is good, it's not perfect. It works 90% of the time accurately. About two and a half percent of the time, we won't get a result. So we will have biopsied an embryo, sent a sample for analysis, and either because they can't detect the DNA or the DNA amplifies irregularly, the genetic testing company reports that they can't make a call as to whether or not the embryo is normal or not. About 4% of the time, we may get a call that says the embryo is abnormal. This is an embryo we would not want to transfer. Unfortunately, 4% of the time, the cells that we may have sampled are abnormal, while the remainder of the embryo is normal. Fortunately, this happens only in less than 5% of cases. However, it is a risk and a limitation of the test. The other possibility is that we get a result where the embryo is called normal, and unfortunately, a woman miscarries. The miscarriage risk with PGS is about 5 to 10% after transferring a normal embryo. That's exceptionally low compared to the natural rate, but it's still real. So it is possible that we sample cells that are found to be normal while the rest of the embryo is abnormal. This is quite rare, but can happen. Why would I consider PGS? PGS testing allows you more information about the embryo. Even in our most high prognosis patients, we know that 25% of embryos are abnormal. If we test embryos from a 42-year-old woman, we know that only one in four is chromosomally normal, meaning having 23 pair of chromosomes. PGS testing allows us to only transfer embryos with a high probability of success. That way we can only transfer one embryo at a time, minimize the risk of twins, and minimize the risk of miscarriage. The risk of miscarriage with a PGS-tested embryo is somewhere between 5 and 10%. For the typical patient at age 42, over half of her pregnancies from untested embryos will miscarry. So that's a reduction from approximately 50% to 5 to 10%. This saves time and, more importantly, heartache for our patients. So in summary, PGS is a powerful tool. It allows us to transfer a single embryo at a time and creates an ongoing pregnancy rate at spring fertility of over 70% with one embryo transferred. PGS has allowed us to minimize the risk of multiple gestation and optimize for a healthy baby at delivery.